in a world where data is an expensive tool and also in a world where the need to develop more data storage hubs in Africa is also on the rise, Kenya is at the forefront of ensuring that it has AI and cloud computing services that ensure that your data is safeguarded. Now, today I'm at IX Africa Data Center that prides itself in being the largest technological advanced digital hub. And here, I'll get to show you how this particular noble initiative is being brought to life. Come with me. Data is a modern day gold or oil, or even more valuable than these most sought after minerals. The need for securing data has been on a soaring high. But before that, you need to understand the evolution of data from the prehistoric period to the modern day big data, cloud, and AI computing. Data, which is simply facts and statistics collected together for reference or analysis, was first stored in cave paintings and engravings in pre civilization period to when industrialization brought the development of paper storage or what we will call the manual data handling. It later transitioned to automated systems with key milestones including the development of writing, the invention of mechanical tabulators, the creation of databases and structured query languages SQLs in the 1970s. The rise of the internet and data warehousing in the 1990s and the explosion of big data in the 2000s for the advanced data development and storage up to today where the focus is on extracting actionable insight from vast, diverse datasets through advanced analytics and machine learning. All this information is stored in powerful computers called servers that host important corporate data, large databases, applications and multimedia content. This includes customer records and financial information to the data needed for artificial intelligence, e-commerce and cloud services. This critical information can be exposed to high insecurity risks or data breach, hence the need for a data center. A data center is like a maximum security prison. You know how a maximum security prison is? Right. The prisoners are in there and the security is very, very, very heightened. So for us, this is a maximum security prison and the prisoners here are our customer rights and the equipment they host mm -hmm. and the data they uh, transmit and, uh, you know, work with. So we provide you with space, we provide you with power, enough power, redundant power from two diverse routes. Uh, we provide you with enough cooling because you need to cool your equipment. We also provide you with connectivity ecosystem. We also provide you with security. IX Africa, which started operations in 2023, have maintained a steady rise in securing data for large corporations, among them Safaricom and Starlink. With over 30 networks, Shah says that serving big institutions has been made possible by key engineering advantages and access to an advanced market that has made it easy to work with top brand experts. The data center, sitting on a five-acre piece of land, is powered by Schneider Electric Company, which also manufactures its UPS devices, complementing the need to localize expertise and equipment sourcing. We have all the major you know, players who are connected to us, you know, right from uh, the big giant, you know, Safaricom, we have all the telcos, so, you know, Airtel, Telcom, uh, and then we have uh, all the submarine providers, so, you know, companies like Seacom, uh, Wyok, uh, you know, they're, they're connected, and then, you know, the, the ISPs, um, so, you know, there's, there's uh, uh, dozens of uh, ISPs uh, currently in the, in the market, uh, you know, serving sort of uh, either using Wi-Fi or, or fiber to the home, uh, so a lot of them are also connected and then, you know, um, uh, it's not only really limited to wired networks. Uh, now, low orbit satellites are, are becoming, uh, becoming an important part of the ecosystem. Um, so the largest uh, provider here uh, actually has a, has a teleport uh, with us as well. All this is kept under top level guard that secures data for customers, creating a number of checkpoints and highly protected access points through two-factor authentications. When it comes to IT security, which is you know as important if, if not more, again we have a sim similar certification that we go through, uh, which is the the ISO uh, 27001 you know standard. So so we are also you know certified uh, by that. Um, and then you know when when it comes to the customer's data, um, we are also registered uh, with the office office of the the data commissioner. Um, so you know we we have that uh, certification as well. And we ensure that you know we we don't have access or, or, or influence in, in whatever manner 
uh, the the customer's data. So so that is protected. And then when it comes to you know um, the the IT security, um, we we have a we don't we have a very separate um, uh, internet network for our internal needs uh, compared to what the the clients uh, go through. As you can see, the door even before opening the door, the door is a access control with a two FA two factor authentication method, whereby I have to use my access card to open the door as well as uh, use my fingerprints. It's a bio device. So I'm the only one authorized um, as operations manager, plus uh, the support staff. Those are the engineers and other support staff for the customers. Uh, other departments like marketing department, sales department, they're authorized. They're not authorized to enter this space. Like our friend um, Ragi here, he cannot open this door. Yeah, because he doesn't, uh, um, on a daily basis, interact with the customers. Yeah, that's just to ensure that we're keeping our customer equipment and data um, protected. The facility has a meticulously wired system that connects power from sources to the server room or the white space where server racks are hosted. Ideally, we already ensure our customer equipment is kept secret, secure, and it's very safe. So right now, there are no equipment here. These are empty racks. You have done caging, but ideally when you're coming and the customer is live, you'll not be able to video or even come to this space. These are acting cables okay. going to individual racks, All right. and they are connected and terminated on individual racks. Okay. So we have around 2 to 24 racks. No miss though. Right. So, and that's the reason why you can see on the app bar, the main app bar here, we have over um, almost, almost 15, 16, or up to a two uh, number of atom cables. Right, right. So each cable is protecting individual rack just to ensure that uh, if there is a problem, if our customer is installing an equipment and they end short circuit, this person is protected via the ATIM system. The mega facility is cooled by an indirect adiabatic cooling system method, which uses evaporative cooling to cool air without adding moisture to it by passing air through a heat exchanger. Here, the heat exchanger has two separate air streams, one stream of warm outside air that is cooled by evaporation and another stream of inside air that is cooled indirectly by the fast stream. This system allows for efficient cooling and energy saving. We can actually uh, cool this space without seizing water. Okay. Yes. What is the other uh, 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 a section of our cooling and the, capa the cooling capabilities of these units? These are autonomous systems. It changes automatically based on the garden floor. Could be using uh, free cooling right now, just using the outside air. The next moment is uh, adiabatic, whereby it's now using the water. The next moment is using now the DX mode. So it keeps on changing automatically. For this system, it consumes uh, a thousand liters per two hours. To increase the cooling efficiency, the technicians use a hot aisle containment method to further secure the server racks and customer equipment in each of the five pods in the facility. For the rats, there is this space that is contained. It's called hot aisle containment. So when the equipment is running, the equipment in the customer racks are running, they suck air from the exterior part of it. Right. That's the cold air. So the hot air is discharged into the hot aisle naturally hot air rises of course we have the fans on these units the cooling units have um, upper fans yeah those are the, the fans that suck us in right the, it sucks in the hot air into the heat exchanger and blows the cold air back into the external pipes yeah so this containment is here to ensure that we are very efficient in terms of cooling we don't suck it the cold and the hot air that's that's we don't need hot and cold air okay so we become by doing so, it becomes very efficient. As the industry grows exponentially, CEO Shah says that Kenya stands at positive odds of expansion due to international players like Microsoft, AWS and Oracle announcing interest in entering the Kenyan market. It's a matter of time uh, before we see these large um, you know, uh, uh, regional cloud deployments coming here. We will work with, uh, you know, with any partner who who sees uh, value in, in what infrastructure we can provide. So, so yeah, we, we would be in discussions with, uh, with a multiple number of them. The first phase of the center named NBOX1 uses 4.5 megawatts and an expansion for an 18 megawatts NBOX2, which will be three times bigger than the existing facility will soon be underway. We also um, uh, got our second site, uh, which is about uh, 40 kilometers from here in Limuru. Uh, in an industrial park called uh, Tilisi, 
so there we have plans to build a 53 megawatt uh, data center. This comes as Kenya aims to be a mega data host in the region to power AI computing and draw in international corporations. In 2024, during his visit to the United States, President William Ruto witnessed the signing of an agreement between power producer Kenjan, UAE's G42 and Microsoft to build a $1 billion data center. He was optimistic that the project will be 100% powered by renewable energy tapped from Kenjan's geothermal fields at Olkaria. Ruto said that later he will find out that data centers are power guzzlers and that to operate one, an entity requires about 1,000 megawatts, which appear to be a slight exaggeration. The IEA says that average data centers are quite small in power terms, with demand between 5 to 10 megawatts. But large hyperscale data centers, which are increasingly common, have power demands of 100 megawatts or more. This output can power roughly over 16,000 homes or an entire small city. Thank <laughs> you.